Hello and welcome to WeatherSnap. I'm Claire Nazir. And I'm Alex Deakin. What happens when hurricanes head north across the Atlantic? We'll be discussing this interesting transition in a moment and why it's relevant to our weather coming up across the UK. But first, you've probably seen in the news the devastating flooding in Libya, which has been the latest country to be impacted by Storm Daniel. Recent news reports estimate there could be as many as 20,000 people killed and many, many more missing and injured. Our thoughts are with all of those affected and the rescue services trying to help in the recovery efforts. Meanwhile, to the west of Europe, other weather systems have been bringing some stormy conditions. Uh, a couple of different storms in different developing stages. Two are hurricanes. And here in the UK, we are going to be keeping an eye on the track and the behaviour of these storms. Yes, the names do seem to pop up in the chief briefs every day at the moment, don't they, Alex? Lee yeah. and Margot. Lee and Margot. And... It really interesting setup right now. We are in the peak of the hurricane season, but obviously I'm not the person to talk about this because we have our expert, the man in the know, Julian Hemming, tropical prediction scientist, and I caught up with him earlier. Lee has been active for um, well over a week now and is currently situated uh, just to the west of Bermuda. At some stage, it was a Category 5 hurricane, which is the, the highest category you can get, but has gradually weakened over the last few days. So is is a weaker hurricane now, and we expect that weakening trend to continue as uh, Lee moves northwards. And what will happen? It will uh, impact land. It will make landfall. We currently expect it to be close to the USA-Canada border, possibly over uh, the Canadian state of uh, Nova Scotia, and that's going to happen um, at the weekend. It will by that uh, stage be either a tropical storm or an extra tropical storm as it goes through a transition. OK, and then how how about Margot? Obviously a very different track, a uh, different beast altogether. Margot is sitting a lot further east in the Atlantic, so it's actually sitting right in the central part of the Atlantic, a long way from any land. Uh, uh, the nearest land is off to the uh, northeast, and that's the Azores. Now, Margot has been moving uh, gradually northwards, but we expect it to slow over the next few days and gradually meander or maybe do a complete loop in the central part of the Atlantic. All through that time, it will slowly be weakening, so it'll, it'll drop from a hurricane to a tropical storm. And Margot could be hanging around in the Atlantic until well into the middle of next week and then may eventually be swept up into uh, the more kind of westerly airstream at higher latitudes, which is also going to affect the remnants of Hurricane Lee. So we have two hurricanes which are slowly weakening. Obviously, we're keeping a keen eye on them here at the Met Office because there will be implications downstream to what happens with our weather. Can you explain what happens when a hurricane goes through this extra tropical transition? A conventional hurricane in the tropics or the subtropics will have a number of characteristics. Its, uh, its energy is driven by the, the warmth and the uh, moisture from the ocean surface. The strongest winds will be very close to the center. And then as it moves towards higher latitudes, it starts to get engaged by the jet stream, uh, which is uh, at, at higher latitudes. And that kind of changes the shape and structure of the storm and the wind field expands, which means that um, sometimes even though the strongest winds near the centre might weaken, the area which is covered by winds can uh, increase. And that's what's happening with Hurricane Lee. And so it's got a very big wind field at the moment. So the area which will experience tropical storm strength uh, winds, kind of gale force, uh, is very large. And the storm also becomes fairly asymmetric. Sometimes it can elongate in, in one direction. But these extra tropical storms, even though they've uh, changed characteristics, can still pack a punch sometimes. Fascinating stuff there from Julian. Our thanks to Julian Hemming, tropical storm prediction scientist. So extra tropical transition happens before any storm affects our shores. But the energy entrained in these systems can play into the predictability of our local weather. The most significant hurricane to go through extra tropical transition and hit the UK, certainly in, in recent years, was Hurricane Ophelia. Remember that one? Well, it was six years ago. I can't believe it's six years ago. I can't believe that because we were literally in the Met Office looking at it and going, 
I, we can't believe how far east it is. Yeah. You know, where is it going to hit? Is it going to hit Iberia? And then it slowly moved northwards. Yeah, it was the 16th of October 2017, brought very strong winds to western parts of the UK and Ireland. And 16th of October, pretty significant as well, because it was uh, that's the date of the Great Storm. And it was exactly 30 years on since um, the Great Storm, a.k.a. the Michael Fish Storm of uh, 1987. Uh, so it was ex-Hurricane Ophelia, obviously got that name from the UK National Hurricane Centre. And it was the uh, second storm of our storm season, the 2017-2018 uh, uh, season, uh, following on from Storm Ailey. Now, obviously, it was it, because it was an ex-Hurricane, we, we kept the hurricane name from this one. So we went Ailey to Ophelia. Strongest winds were around Irish Sea Coast, particularly West Wales, gusts of 60-70 uh, knots. So what's that? 66 to 78 miles an hour, that kind of ballpark. So uh, pretty lively in terms of its gust strength, uh, but only really exposed locations saw those kind of gusts. Uh, it was the most easterly track of a hurricane ever. It got, it got still as a hurricane further east than any other hurricane has. So it's a pretty significant storm. But for most of us, what we remember as storm Ophelia was associated with those incredible skies. Um, I remember Dan Harris, our very own Dan Harris, took a photo over the Met Office building of, I think it was the sun sort of cloaked in this smoke and it had a real red and orange hue. And that was because of the combination of Sahara and dust. And we've seen quite a lot of that recently, but also the smoke from the Portuguese wildfires during that summer. So we had that warm southerly airflow. And so I think a lot of people remember that. It hit, the, obviously, the headlines. And those pictures were really quite spooky, weren't they? So atmospheric. So atmospheric here at, at, at um, Met Office HQ in Exeter. Obviously, we were closer to the storm. We were seeing that smoke drawn up from those Portuguese wildfires. I've, I've never seen anything like that really before. We, we often talk about dramatic sunset sunrises when there's, when there's smoke or dust in the skies, but actually they don't turn it that colourful. It's all about how orange and how atmospheric it gets. It, re it really was quite remarkable. Yeah. So we are keeping a keen eye on what's happening across the tropical North Atlantic at the moment, as Julian has just said. And no signs of anything currently, Alex, as we head into the weekend. So what can we expect? Well, those storms at the moment still well out in the Atlantic. They will interfere with our weather into next week. But more importantly, at the moment, they're interfering with our computer models because those storms just add uncertainty. There's a lot of energy within them. And as I talked about in the 10 day trend on Wednesday when I recorded that, uh, they do just create uncertainty. So the, so the four, I showed the four main computer models for the middle of next week for Wednesday, and they all had different position. They were all treating Lee and Margot differently. And that's typical at this time of year. So those longer range forecasts mid-September are always complicated by what's going on in the tropics. Some of them are developing Lee more, some of them are developing Margot more. There's a bit more certainty now, but there's still, you know, there's always going to be that, that element of doubt because they're such so much energy involved in them that they can affect the jet stream. We often talk about the jet stream driving our weather patterns. But when you have these powerful storms, there's so much energy, then the opposite can happen. It's like the tail wagging the dog. So they can actually affect the jet stream rather than the other way around. So that's why there's more uncertainty in the forecast often at this time of year, and particularly for next week. But we are pretty sure that next week, the trends are going to be for low pressure systems and much more of an Atlantic influence. So spells of wet and windy weather interspersed with um, some sunshine and we're not going to see the heat that we've had uh, last week. Having said that, we are going to see some warmth this weekend before we get these storms coming in. Through this weekend, it's warming up in the south and that will trigger more thunderstorms. Now, we're down a notch compared to the really violent storms that we saw last weekend. But if you didn't see any storms last weekend and many places didn't, then these storms are still going to be significant because they could drop a lot of water hail and lightning still possible as well. So just some big storms. Careful and watch out for those big storms this weekend. Mm, interesting. So interesting weather coming up for us here in the UK. In fact, September has been a notable month. It's been a lively one, a very busy one. In fact, Lee and Margot, if they do influence the UK weather later on this month, won't be the first tropical set of storms to have done so. So I'm, it's probably a dim and distant memory now, the beginning of September, uh, where there was so much warmth in the air. It was just unbelievable, wasn't it? But some analysis has now been done and we've got some top lines coming out and obviously there'll be more so coming out over the next few weeks because it was a quite an exceptional event. 
well, the stats are, are absolutely incredible. You look at the you look at the current temperature for September, the cumulative temperature for September. Uh, Alex Burkle showed this on the on the deep dive. Again, you can catch that on our YouTube channel on the deep dive um, earlier this week on Tuesday. Recorded where September is so far with the temperatures compared to the average, and we're obviously way way above average, but actually way above the the extreme, the highest September on record so far. So that's something that we'll keep a, a close eye on. But basically, what happened? Actually, the first couple of days of September weren't that hot, but then they really peaked from what the third, fourth, and it lasted for. Uh, pretty much a week. I think some locations were in heat wave, uh, reached their heat wave criteria for eight days in a row. High pressure, basically, jet stream to the north, high pressure sitting to the east of the UK, southerly winds, and that brought us, um, you know, fine and sunny weather, just like it did during June, really. And the influence of a former tropical storm as well, which was really, you know, it was there, it's sitting in the distance, but obviously spewing, spewing up this tr tropical air, and that was tropical cyclone Franklin. So we're getting through the hurricanes this season now after a very quiet start across the tropical North Atlantic. So the warmest places were obviously in the south and the east of England, but the warmth extended across Scotland and Northern Ireland as well. And temperatures were about, I'm going to say around 12 degrees above average, not only in the southeast, but also in Scotland on the 7th, we saw temperatures in excess of 27 degrees Celsius, which is pretty unbelievable for this time of year. And I'm probably unbelievable now if you are sitting across southern Scotland anticipating the rain coming up from that waving weather front, temperatures are going to be about 13 degrees. And also there is a prov provisional record just on the horizon. And we're talking Northern Ireland here in County Tyrone, Castle Derg saw a temperature on the 8th of September of 28 degrees Celsius. So it's a provisional new record beating the one before, which was actually 1906 in Amar, 27.6 degrees. So we're awaiting uh, confirmation on that. Um, so the highest temperature of the year was actually in September in Faversham, which has had record breaking temperatures before. But this wasn't record breaking. It was just the highest temperature of the year, 33.5 degrees Celsius. So it wasn't exceptional. We've seen higher temperatures in September. But what was exceptional, Alex, was the the amount of days where we saw in excess of 30 degrees, wasn't it? Yeah, honest. that was that was incredible. The, the, it was the length of this heat wave. It was the most significant. Seven consecutive days somewhere in the UK recorded over 30 degrees Celsius. And that is by far and away the longest streak. We have had other Septembers where we've had, I think, five days of 30 degrees, but that wasn't all in a row. The longest previous uh, consecutive streak was just three days in a row. So, yeah, to have seven days in a row, as I mentioned, some stations recorded heat wave criteria for eight days in a row. And, you know, you say, yeah, OK, we've had higher temperatures in September, but it's pretty rare for September to see the highest temperature of the year. It did happen in 2016. But before that, I think it was the mid 50s it happened. So it's very rare for us to have the highest temperature of the year in September. And of course, it wasn't all about the daytime temperatures, the nights really quite hot because we haven't had that much through the summer obviously at times in june it was pretty warm but i don't remember the nights being so oppressive in june obviously the days were pretty hot but the, the you know the land hadn't warmed up as much so uh, it wasn't quite as uncomfortable at night but yeah it was really remarkable some of the minimum temperatures uh, above 20 celsius so tropical nights we had some of those across england and wales the warmest night uh, of the year so far 20.5 celsius at plymouth that was on the 5th of september and the sea obviously is at its warmest as well which probably can contributed to that plymouth uh, hitting that highest temperature of the year overnight um station records were also broken as well too too numerous to go into into all the detail as much as we love our stats i'm not going to bore you with all of the stats but um, yeah lots of analysis still being done on that september heat about what's been happening this week in terms of climate. Um, Alex, you did a Spaces earlier this week, didn't you? Last Thursday it was, so the 7th. So that should still be available on X, formerly Twitter. Yeah, we did a, a special climate special. We did one a month, and this one was on August's theme, which was on decision making, we particularly focused on Africa, which is a continent, obviously, that uh, gets, gets more than its fair share of impacts from climate change. So it's about decision making, how the scientists from the Met Office can really impact governments uh, and other organizations to help make better decisions to to plan for the future so it's all about decision making really good um, really good discussion actually uh, so you can catch up with that on uh, as i say on x form also a new climate special out this week 
And this is also a podcast and this is fantastic. So I interviewed pretty much the chief of NOAA, which is, you know, what an honor in itself. His name yeah. is Dr. Michael Morgan. He's the Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Environmental Observation and Prediction. Big, big title there, federal chief, basically. And he's one of these guys where you listen to him and he could be in, in any Hollywood blockbuster movie as the good guy who you could trust with the information. You know, what the one who keeps calm under, you know, stuff going on all around him and and you know you just think just speak man he's got just a beautiful voice and so i had a conversation with him which was mostly him talking actually i wanted to hear about the climate science that's been carried out across NOAA, um and also their collaboration the NOAA collaboration with us here in the uk so there's a really good initiative it's like an academy they've started transatlantic academy but where we'll be learning from their experts and vice versa so in the podcast, Dr. Morgan talks about these billion dollar storms, and there's a lot of analysis being done about that. And obviously the impacts are absolutely astronomical. And we can learn from that, obviously. I mean, they get a lot more storms than we do here in the UK. But at the same time, he does also talk about the skills base that we've developed over the last few years in terms of AI and machine learning, and how that now filters into our forecasts and delivers some really incredible incredible results. So he wants his teams to learn from us in terms of that expertise. So great partnership, really, really good. He's an impressive academic and you must listen to the show. It's really good. And that's out on your podcast channel of choice and also on our Met Office YouTube channel. It's so good to, to collaborate with, with Noah. And like you say, this initiative gives opportunities to both teams to, to work and learn together. So absolutely fantastic. Yeah, always. I mean, that there's a quote from DJ Shadow saying, I'm not a teacher of the drums, I'm a student of the drums. And it's like, we are just students of weather, aren't we? And it's always good to learn from other people. I don't think that will make the edit. I like that. It's a good... I have a mug that someone got me. Uh, it was a secret Santa present from a Christmas do a few years ago. And it says, it says on it, um, I'm a meteorologist, so let's just assume now that I'm correct or something like that. It's a, it's a, it, yeah. And I hate it because they obviously make lots of these mugs and it's just like, you know, if I'm a, if I'm, I, I'm a uh, surgeon, so let's just assume I'm, but if any profession in the world knows that they're not always right, it's a meteorologist, right? We, we, we are, we are the, the last people to say, oh, we're always right. You always, there's always something to learn. You never, you never go 100% because, because weather always bites you. You know, always comes back and bites. So if you are too confident, so I don't like this. I do like this one because it's nice and big. And you get a good brew in it. So I keep it. But actually the sentiment on the side of it makes me cringe every time. It was a secret Santa present from someone here and I don't know who it was. Wow. But um, yeah, yeah. That is not, that is not meteorology. No, you know, you it's not meteorology. Know, you know, Mother Nature has the upper hand, always. Absolutely. The weather machine is a beast and it's kind to us. It keep, gives us life. But also there's always something around the corner, isn't it? And exactly. I think that... You know, and, I, and that's what we love about it. The challenges. OK, let's start on solid ground. We do know what's happening. We're not necessarily sure about what the weather's happening next week, but we, we, we do know what's coming up next week because we're anticipating the latest on the Arctic sea ice report. So that's going to be really interesting. We'll get a, an update as soon as we know what the, the, the minimum is, because we're coming up to the to the minimum with that, aren't we? So more details on that as and when we'll probably have an update here on Weather Snap next week. And talking about expertise in climate, it's the New York Climate Week that begins on Sunday. And the theme this year is we can, we will. So a really positive theme, which is fantastic. And they have a, an impressive array of speakers from the world of energy, finance, science, politics, activism. I mean, these all these experts are coming together with their knowledge, with their experience to you know raise the game yet again we can we will so lots of information coming out of new york climate week from sunday we can and we will shut up so we will uh we'll finish it there thank you very much for listening and uh we'll do it all again next week see you then Another great weather snap, Claire. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Then you catch all of our daily weathers on YouTube as well. And if podcasts are your thing, check out our Met Office podcast channel. Lots of information, lots of stories there. And we'll see you again next week.